ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you the Honorable Mayor of the City of Gainesville, the Honorable Ed Brady. Thank you, Bob. Well, what a fantastic day. It's always a great day uh, when we can celebrate our representative system of government with the swearing in of two new members to the Gainesville City Commission. So we are going to get right to work because we know this is what you, you all came for. The first thing we need to do as, a, as an official body is adopt the agenda. So moved. All right. And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All right. Any opposed? Come on, really? All right, so motion is adopted. Roll call, we're all present except for Commissioner Wells, who's out of town, but uh, we have enough to conduct business, so we're gonna do that. And we do ask now that uh, if you'll pause for the invocation, which will be delivered by uh, Pastor Adrian Taylor. May we pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the blessing of this day, the day that you have made in which we will rejoice and be glad. Thank you for being our provider, protector, and power. Thank you for being great and mighty, strong and awesome. Thank you for the privilege of living in a free, democratic society that honors, as you do, the volitional will of humanity and each person's God-given liberties. We thank you for elected, appointed, and professional leaders who help carry out the laws of our society and establish the structure for our democracy. Your word tells us to pray for those that have charge over us that we may live a quiet and peaceable life. We pray that you grant our leaders integrity, strength, wisdom, and boldness to resolve the conflicts that threaten our peace and remove the challenges that impede our equitable prosperity. We now pray that our newly elected leaders of this commission, Charles Golston and Harvey Budd, and their new colleagues will have your grace. Please grant them direction, discernment, and determination to help lead our city to a new era of equitable prosperity that includes all people in our community. Lord, we pray you will grant Gainesville grace not to mirror other cities, but to find its own unique greatness, serving as an example for others. We pray you help these commissioners serve as good stewards over the people's business and keep them free from corrupt influences. Lord, most passionately, we pray for a spirit of unity. Unity among commissioners who may disagree on issues but agree to strive for the city of Gainesville to become a world-class city. Grant us unity between the Spring Hill community, Sugar Hill community, Lincoln Estates, Duval, the Duck Pond, College Park, Porter's community, Fifth Avenue, Stephen Foster neighborhood, Pleasant Street District, and all others. Unity between our community and police officers. Unity between Alachua County, the city of Gainesville, and all other municipalities. Unity among business, environmental, arts, and everything in between communities. Lord, make us one community. We pray you will please bless this ceremony with your presence and power. In the name of the only wise God, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, for the main event. And although it's very festive, I just have to say that uh, what these two men are about to do is they're about to join a 230-year tradition in our country at all levels of government in taking the oath of office. So at this time, we'll start with Harvey M. Budd. Please raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I, Harvey M. Budd. I, Harvey M. Budd. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. Honor, protect, and defend. Honor, protect, and defend. The Constitution and Government of the United States. The Constitution and Government of the United States. And of the State of Florida. And of the State of Florida. That I am duly qualified to hold office. That I am duly qualified to hold office. Under the Constitution of the State. Under the Constitution of the State. And under the Charter of the City of Gainesville. And under the Charter of the City of Gainesville. That I will well. That I will well. And faithfully perform the duties. And I will faithfully perform the duties of county commissioner of city commissioner city commissioner <laughs> give them time comic relief <laughs> the last one i did was the county commissioner on which i'm now <laughs> which i am now about to enter which i'm now about to enter congratulations thank you Sorry. 
He's not even in office yet, and he's already talking consolidation of the government. <laughs> and now we will ask Charles E. Gostin to step forward for the oath of office. Put, place your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand. I, I, Charles Gostin, Charles Gostin, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support, I will support, honor, honor, protect and defend, protect and defend, the Constitution, the Constitution, and government, and government, of the United States, of the United States, and of the state of Florida, and of the state of Florida, that I am duly qualified, that I am duly qualified, to hold office, to hold office, under the Constitution, under the Constitution of the state, of the state, and under the charter, and under the charter of the city of Gainesville, of the city of Gainesville, and that I will well, and that I will well, and faithfully, and faithfully perform the duties, perform the duty of city commissioner, of city commissioner, on which I am about to enter, of which I am about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Judge. Fantastic. And now, with them both duly sworn in, we would absolutely love to hear their remarks. So first I'll ask Harvey Budd. Commissioner, Commissioner Harvey Budd. I've practiced this a lot, so I'm hoping it will do well. Americans are fighters. We are tough, we are resourceful and creative. And if we have a chance to fight on a level playing field where everyone pays a fair share and everyone has a real shot, then no one, no one can stop us. And that's a quote from Senator Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> Welcome honored guests, dignitaries, and commissioners. Thank you all for attending my swearing in ceremony. Another election cycle has ended, and now we move on to two new city commissioners. And I'm honored to be one of those. I, it has been a long eight months from the Lawton Childs dinner in September when I informally announced my candidacy to this moment, a momentous occasion where I have now taken the oath of office. I am overwhelmed by my many friends and supporters who have reached out to me since the election. My God, Facebook, oh. <laughs> I will not let you down, I promise that. My first action as your new city commissioner is to thank everyone that worked on my election campaign. You all, all made it possible for me to be, have this opportunity. We called our collective group of supporters and volunteers Team Bud. What a hardworking and dedicated group. And please give yourself a round of applause for those who have worked on my campaign. It would be difficult to recognize all or part of the team without leaving someone important out of the mix. But you know who you are, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. However, there are two very special women who are captains of Team Bud that need mentioning. At the top of that list is my wife, Eileen. The, the love of my life, life partner, and the most tenacious campaigner that you could ever meet. You saw her work the room tonight, didn't, today, didn't you? <laughs> Eileen pushed me to work harder and smarter, especially, the, especially, to, especially in the last week of the runoff. At one point of the campaign, voters were beginning to wonder if Eileen was the run running for office. <laughs> Eileen's reputation and that of the Silverman family was a major difference in winning the election. I thank Eileen's parents, Joe and Faye, who are no longer with us, for living exemplary lives and treating everyone equally in their clothing store in downtown Gainesville during a time when racial segregation was deeply entrenched in the South. Silverman's was definitely worth coming down for, downtown for. The next special woman is Con Connie Amaday, my campaign manager. 
And now she's vice president of operations for Bud Broadcasting Company, Inc. I needed extra help to do this job. When I was feeling that we were not doing well, Connie would say, we got this. And we did. Connie was there to hold my hand and provide an intuitive strategy that worked. Connie's life experience in Gainesville allowed me to broaden my appeal to our very, very diverse community. She continues to bring her pearls of wisdom to my office on a daily basis, and Eileen and I look forward to Connie being part of our lives. I would be negligent if I didn't mention two of my worthy opponents, Adrian Hayes Santos, is he here? And Jay Curtis. Both of these distinguished men are emerging leaders who care deeply about Gainesville, and it was my pleasure to get to know them both during our campaigning together. Adrian really impressed me with his vision and maturity, rare qualities for a young man just 30 years old. After the disappointment of losing a hard-fought race by only a few hundred votes, he landed on his feet, reached out to our campaign, and did whatever we needed to help us win. To show that strength of character after a political defeat is very impressive, affirming what we know, character matters. Jay showed, how Jay showed undeniable cinema and conviction during the election, balancing his challenging work schedule, you know he always flies around the country, and family obligations with the demands of the campaign trail was impressive to witness, especially during our intense runoff race, showing again and again that he had the right stuff to take his seat as a leader in our community's future. Excuse me for a glass of water. That's a Rubio trick. So. <laughs> One of the VIPs with us today is my mother, Ray Bud Cypress, who's sitting right there in the front, who, <laughs> who recently moved back to Gainesville to live closer to family and is joining the caring community at the atrium. My mother is an amazing woman whose life is like a romance novel. 97 years ago, my mom was born in London, England in the waning days of World War I. She was there during the blitzing of London by the Germans in World War II. She was an immigrant to both Australia in 1950 and the United States in 1957. My mom was valedictorian of all girls high school in London. She had a career as a ladies' dress designer for many years on three continents. She's been an oil painter, poet, avid book reader, and is now into Skype and Facebook on her computer. I am thrilled to have her here today. I love you, Mom. So that my fellow commissioners can better understand me, I will give you the abridged story of my life. The last time I gave the long version of my life was my first date with Eileen. About 35 years ago at the old Hilton Ho Hotel restaurant on 13th Street, and I've been asked politely and lovely, no, lovingly not to repeat the two-hour version too often. So please don't ask me, don't ask me where you're from. Even though I was born in Leeds, England in 1947, I spent my early years from three to 10 years old in Sydney, Australia. My sister and I went to a Jewish parochial school and we dressed in proper school uniforms. I wore a, uh, for me it was a, a straw hat in the summer and a little gray cap in the winter. I wore short gray pants with neat gray knee socks, a blue shirt with my blue and white striped school tie. I think you got the picture. I had an idyllic life as a child. Due to Sydney's California-like weather, my sister and I lived at the beach. After school, I never wore a shoes or a shirt. And we both traveled extensively on public transportation to go places either on a double-decker bus, red bus, or a trolley car, which we call trams. On the streets of Sydney, I learned to become fearless and independent. In August of 1957, when we moved to the United States, where over a five and a half year period of time, or time span, we moved nine times. 
I lived on Long Island, that's where I got this accent from, upstate New York, South Carolina, four different times in three cities, Elberton, Georgia, and a few weeks in Little Rock, Arkansas. I attended a lot of different schools and was always the new kid. My parents would drop me off at school and I would register myself for my classes. I would keep all my old report cards to establish what I had studied and at what school. Our last major <clears throat> move was to West Hollywood, Florida. My parents bought a dress factory in Miami during, of all times, the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. There was no one in Miami, everybody was leaving. And decided to live in Hollywood because it had a large Jewish community. Over that five and a half year period from 1957 to 1960, December of 62, my parents really struggled financially. And we were hopeful that the move to Hollywood would be our last. Hollywood reminded us, at least it reminded me, of Sydney, except we now lived miles from the beach. And of course, there was the humidity. I shared most of our family's experiences with my sister, Debbie Frank, who cannot be with us today, but will be watching the video of this occasion. We had our share of sibling rivalry, but we always knew then and appreciate now that we, that we always had each other's best interests at heart. Between my sister and Eileen's family, we have nine nieces and nephews, eight of whom attended the University of Florida. So we actually bleed orange and blue in our family. To our delight, several family members have returned to Gainesville to live and raise their families and adds to the joy of today by my commitment to keep our community vibrant and strong for the generations that follow us. I graduated from MacArthur High School along with Gunnar Paulson, who I guess you all know, in 1965 as treasurer of my senior class, voted most dependable, was elected to the student senate, president of the service club, and one of the stars of the senior class play. I was no longer that new kid in school. That fall, I came to Gainesville and the University of Florida. I fell in love with the place, and except for nine months when I worked for a national CPA firm in Miami, I have never left. The rest is history. I became a CPA here, was the founder and managing partner of Bud Sister and Company, CPAs. I, of course, married Eileen Silverman, whose family came here in the early 30s, and I developed a career in the broadcast business. I've had a lot of personal and financial success in Gainesville due to my friends and former clients, many of them who are, are here today. Some of my friends in Gainesville I have known from high school, and many of the friends I have known from my student days on campus at the University of Florida. First as an undergraduate, and then during my two years attending law school. All those great folks decided to live in Gainesville and share our lives together. We consider you all part of our extended family. Family not by blood, but out of true friendship. We thank you all for being here today. In the Jewish religion, there is a balance, always a balance between the sweetness and sorrow of life. May 21st was always a special day of my life. On May 21st in 1960, 55 years ago today, I had my bar mitzvah in Glens Falls, New York, and the Bible, which is up front there, we used to take my oath today, was given to me by the women of that synagogue. However, today is also the yurt site of my father, Norman Budd, who died in 1975, and this is the 40th anniversary on the Jewish calendar of his passing. He's buried in the B'nai Israel Cemetery at the corner of East University and Waldo Road, approximately 10 blocks from here. The other part of my sorrow is the loss of my stepfather, Alex Cypress, on March 16th, this year, the day before the first election. He nearly made it to 100 year, 101 years old. The sweetness is that my mother was able to join us today and she has returned to Gainesville. And finally, I know you want me to get to the end of this. I don't want this event to sound like another campaign speech, but there are two goals I have for Gainesville I need to mention just once again. First, I would like to help GRU re rebuild its branding and become a kinder, gentler, and smarter city-owned utility with a brighter financial future. Second, I would like to rededicate the community into a stronger effort to bring more jobs to East Gainesville especially on the Waldo Road corridor. Thank you.
it is unacceptable to me and a lot of my friends that we have citizens living in poverty. And I'll work with my fellow commissioners to provide the tools needed to level the playing field. We can do better for all our community. It's now time to, to, for me to bring all my professional skills, knowledge and experience gained over 40 years serving on advisory boards and creating startup businesses to be put to use for the greater good of our Gainesville community. And as President Obama would say, I am shovel ready to start my job for the next three years today. Thank you for joining this celebration of our wonderful democracy in action. May God bless this great country and all the citizens of Gainesville, Florida. Thank you. And now, we would like to hear from Commissioner Charles Gostin. First, I would uh, I'd like to thank God for today and yesterday and all of the days before those that made all of this an answer to my prayers and the prayers of so many others. I want to thank everyone that participated in today's swearing in ceremony, especially Pastor Taylor, uh, the pastor of Spring Hill Missionary Baptist Church, Judge Walter Green, and my son standing in the back, Staff Sergeant Shondell Goston. The question on a lot of people's mind today and ever since the runoff election is how did I do it? Well, I didn't do it. We did it. A team of dedicated people that were textbook in their preparation and their execution. We worked hard and we worked clean and never Never did we let up. We walked hard through all neighborhoods in our district more than twice, focused on our job and never looked or worried about our opponents, all four of them. I knew that District 1 was in pain and was overlooked by a lot of people that could have never made our district better or everyone that lives and want to live including myself in District 1. Prayers got me through all of the, the, the things that was created to stop me and my team. Constant prayer by many relieved me of the uncertainty of the actions being used against me only because those who thought that this district belonged to them when it only belonged to the people who live in it. And as of today, I represent all of them. Those who believe in me and those who don't, I will approach my commission position with the intent that everyone must be served. For all of those who say you don't know me, well, I was born on Sugar Hill. <laughs> to Willie and Annie Mae Goston by a midwife. And I was the oldest of three children. I was always curious, and my sister and brother's in here today, and they could tell you. And I was attracted to things that people that were doing things that were good. When I was about six years old, every evening I would hear the Lincoln High School band drummers playing the cadence. And I would ask my mother, could I go over to Lincoln? And she'd say, uh-uh, I don't think so. But because of the dangers of, of, the, of, the sec, of the period of segregation that I was oblivious to, I couldn't understand why I could not go, uh, but my mother did. But one day, my cousin Gene and I sneaked away and went to Lincoln. And I watched the band 
And at that point, my little life changed. I observed the pride and precision of each band member as Mr. Jerry Miller watched for any mistakes. At that moment, I knew that I wanted my life to matter. I watched for years the steady degradation of the dreams of so many of the people in my neighborhood, not because they weren't smart or talented, but merely because they were black. Well, we all understood the great divide, but we didn't accept it. There was a daily lesson to be learned being black and growing up on Sugar Hill. It didn't matter how much talent that you possessed, it could only be appreciated at Lincoln High School. And that's where my focus really was. To read everything, to get my hands on and be a good student and be a good son to my mother and to make Annie Mae Gostin proud. Any change of that course at all would have changed my future today. I was told that if you stayed in school, kept out of trouble, and be respectable, and go to college, our lives would vastly be different from our parents. I did all of that and got drafted and fought for my country, came back to finish my education, and I was met with the same racism that I left when I grew up. But this time, I was determined to change the outcomes and prevent the finality of diminishing returns for black people. Sometimes after that, I would wonder, what did I miss? What didn't I do? Even then, there was no commerce on our streets, in our town, but everything was there, and we didn't even know it. I have raised my family, served my community, given of my life to coach and mentor young men as, as a coach would, helped many young men and women get into college or universities, and still nothing changed for those people that was left behind in Gainesville. I did what I could by working with my cousin, Willie Johnson, and putting several radio stations on the air and on cable to give my people and everyone else the chance to have access to vital information. And information was being kept from the African American community for decades. Even after all of these things that have happened today, in District 1, we don't even have a medical emergency facility, but we will. There are more animal hospitals on the west side than there are hospitals on the east side. We have the highest utility rates in the state of Florida. And I must work with my fellow commissioners to bring these rates down to livable levels for District 1 and businesses and the entire city. With the help of the chamber, District 1 will have an economic development with new businesses and businesses that can be started by existing structures. We will have that and more, I promise. We will have free recreational opportunities in District 1 for recreation, tutoring, participation in the arts and music and drama, and other creative activities. This is coming to District 1. And we will have a senior citizen assisted living facility just like the atrium for our seniors who really deserve it. We will have major restaurants that when you want to eat outdoors, you can, and not be disturbed as it's done downtown. We must create better paying jobs and training centers to prepare people for these jobs, and that too will be done. Our local bus service will be improved with shorter waits and better buses for our district. District 1 has been deprived long enough and change is in me, and change is here. I took the challenge of running for office because I was tired of seeing people being taken advantage of and having nowhere and nobody to turn to. I never anticipated failure because I was tired of seeing that and living in it. In my neighborhood, some people felt like this kind of lifestyle was acceptable. 
I never did. I was determined to change the way we live and the conditions that we live in. We have to ask, why is District 1 the only area that schools are being closed or modified? We have to be consolidated and, con and congr congruently put our efforts together and stop failing our children because we have to save them right now. There will be, as there was, detractors that hate to know and see these needed improvements in our district. But they will happen with or without their support. We, as a district, have arrived. I will work with all of the serious citizens and organizations that are committed to making our city and our district better for everyone. With a selfless attitude, I was elected to go and work for you. And with my utilitarian attitude and approach, I will work to do the greatest good for the greatest number. I would not embrace the office with arrogance, but with humility, because that's the only attitude that a public servant should have. I would not take this office feeling that I'm better than anyone, because if I did, we all will fail. We've had enough of people thinking that this office makes them different when it should make them, it should make the people you serve live better. And I will do that. This office is not mine. It's the people's office. I don't see a need to bring dirty politics to this office because the work that was never done, now I have to do it. And that leaves every little time that I have to address those who can't accept the fact that these people that voted for me, they voted for change and a new choice. And that choice was Charles E. Goston. I have to acknowledge my team, the best political group for 500 miles in any direction. First, Debbie Martinez, the general. Debbie Martinez, she's in Europe, and I'm glad she's there. Debbie Martinez is a task master. A, bu a beautiful woman, I wouldn't trade her for nothing in the world, but Debbie will walk you seven days a week. My knees have not recuperated <laughs> yet from walking in neighborhoods. Debbie will walk on Sunday. I refuse to walk on Sunday. Debbie would always tell us we have to meet every day. And she meant it. I thought she was joking at first, but Debbie was serious. And I have to take my hat off to Debbie because she's a master and she's dedicated and a tactical worker. Herman Owens, one if not my best friend, and through all of this that we did, Herman walked every day. Herman was always on the phone five, six times a day. Charles, did we do, did we do this? Charles, did we not do that? Charles, we got to put this sign here. I said, okay, Herman. He'd always tell me, this go, Charles, you can do it. I said, Ehrman, I don't feel like doing it. He said, yeah, we can do it. He never wavered and was there from the start and the finish. And I owe him a lot. He's my best friend and I love him. <laughs> Ernesto Martinez, he's the soldier. He's the husband of Debbie Martinez. He's a soldier because he can take Debbie. <laughs> and he's a trooper. I never thought a Navy man had that kind of endurance, but he proved me wrong this time because he never faded, never. Then there's Scott Austin. Scott is the young dynamo, if not the smartest pol political strategist I've ever met, young or old. And he has a bright future ahead of him. And I want him to know that whatever he decides to run for, I'll be at your right or your left to make it happen. <laughs> Attorney Horace Moore, my classmate, 
that was there stride for stride with me as a friend and as an advisor. After all, he was our senior class president. And he knows you had to be smart to be the class president. So he's a very brilliant man. He's a very dedicated man. He's my classmate, and I love him too. Wilbur Holloway, Mr. Reliable. When you needed something done, Wilbur was the resource man, and his motto was, don't sweat it, I've got it. Wilbur meant that, and he did everything he could. My sis, the Honorable Barbara Sharp, the stabilizer. Her knowledge and 17 years of political experience was invaluable. All of the time she would come and hold a sign even when she was not feeling well. That's what you call true dedication. Barbara Shaw. <laughs> Cleve Shaw, her husband, strategist, possessed the expertise to know my opponents move before they did. We would neutralize those moves, counter those moves, and make sure that whatever we did was going to be successful, and it was. Attorney Ray Washington, strategist, political analyst, legal advisor, a must for our victory. <laughs> Elizabeth Washington, strategist, supporter, and she provided insight for the campaign and our advertising efforts. She was one of the women who would give us the insight of what women needed, because being men, we think we know what women want. But in actuality, we don't. We just do the best we can. Because, because we know we start out thinking that we're in charge. But in about two or three years, you realize that you're not. <laughs> Robert Woody, who was there like a rock, and that's a rock that didn't move and could not be moved. And I appreciate him. We've been friends for over 40 years. And some people felt like, well, why would you be a friend with a person who's a Republican? <laughs> and I would, I would laugh at that and say, well, I don't know too many husbands and wives who have a wife that's a Republican and he's a Democrat. And he said, well, you sleep on this end of the house and I'll sleep on that end. It don't work. Okay, and it doesn't work in our relationship either. Tammy McCants, my treasurer. Now she's special. I picked Tammy because I know she uh, was the treasurer for the people at the transit system, handling millions of dollars. So I said she can handle a little bit of money I have. But one thing that Tammy told me every time we met, and when we didn't meet, Charles, I'm not going to jail for you now. She, she would say, I want those papers here, and I want them at this time and at this day. And I had them there, because Tammy wasn't joking. And she'd always end our conversations with, Charles, I'm not going to jail for you. <laughs> Vivian jones Tremell, dedicated to this victory and provided anything that was needed for our team. Beatrice Washington Johnson, my cousin, she was always with us for her, with her support and her help in all areas. We grew up together. She's one of my closest cousins. I love her to death. Sometimes I have to slow her down because she, she moves pretty fast, OK? And I have to represent uh, and recognize the Republican Party chair, Stafford Jones. He made the race truly a nonpartisan race. Susan Bear was a supporter from the start all the way to the finish because her only desire was to see fairness in this campaign and to see the city commission function like a city commission is supposed to function. And I thank Susan for that. John Martin was a true supporter with a simple mission, which was to make Gainesville and Alachua County better. Not just for some, but for everybody. Ed Kaysen, my best friend. 
Ed is special because I've been knowing Ed about 45 years. And Ed is a retired GPD sergeant that I've known a long time, and he was the initiator of the first community policing effort. Ed had the first radio program on our station, AM 1430, called Communicop, which was designed to educate and inform African Americans about the legal system and what the police can and can't do when they pull you on the side of the road. Because you know, police can always be judge, jury, and executioner right there. And Ed made a lot of people safer because of that show. Ed also was the initiator and the our internet expert who dealt with people who worked on the internet and hid behind their keyboards like most cowards do. See, real people don't hide behind keyboards. They don't hide behind fool's book, I mean Facebook, and uh, say things and do things that are totally unacceptable, totally immature, and totally meant to defame and to, and to chip away at a good person's character. Ed took them to task, Ed broke them, Ed made them wish that they had never came to his website and they had never invited him to theirs. Thank you very much, Ed. And I want to also uh, recognize one of my classmates, Geraldine Nobles, who would call me every week just to encourage me. And I know that Geraldine was having medical problems, but she was ready to come out and hold a sign anyway. And I said, no, Jerry, you know, just you calling is enough for me. And I had a lot of classmates who didn't call, but I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> they were supportive. I'm hoping they were. And, uh, you know, we have to also recognize some of our people who stood on the corners. And let me start out by saying that uh, I want to also give recognition to Charles Demps because Charles was a great supporter. Charles would come by and stop by the house and talk to me, and he'd always say, well, you know, Charles, why did you wait so long? And I told him I didn't. See, you can't do anything until God prescribes and prescribes you to do it. And God told me it was my time. And see, it didn't take having a Fannie Lou Hamer moment where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I just got sick. And I knew it was time for me to bring a cure. And I was the cure. And I thank God for that. I want to you know, recognize my workers. Uh, Carl Williams was also a contributor. Faye Williams was instrumental in keeping her neighborhood together and voting for me on, in that voting block. Uh, she was a great advisor. She worked with uh, uh, the late Marion Barry up in Washington, D.C. And so she knew exactly what to do. I want to recognize Don Glendinning, uh, Elizabeth Yeager, Kathy Benton, Mary Bird, Doc Gordon, John Davies, Sally Hayes, and all those who held signs every Friday and tirelessly walked neighborhoods many, many, many times with Debbie Martinez's direction. And the countless others that I don't know, but they helped tremendously. I'd like to also recognize Irma Dorsey, my little sister, because that is the only one woman public service announcement that goes nonstop, okay? <laughs> She'll talk to everybody, anywhere, all day, all night, doesn't matter. And I thank her. And my job, ladies and gentlemen, today is to serve my district and transform it into what State Representative Clovis Watson Jr. did with the leadership of former Mayor Bonnie K. Burgess and Jean Calderwood and made Alachua the most livable city in our county. And it's still growing. I want to see the same thing happening in District 1. And we will have that. I want smart and environmentally conscious growth on the east side, with a special concentration on preserving all of our historic districts from Fifth Avenue to Pleasant Street, the Duck Pond, and the sister neighborhoods. This may sound too ambitious, but it's not. It just takes work. 
that I want to do. I'm going to repeat that. This takes work that I want to do. And not because of my position, but I'm dedicated to making sure that District 1 in the city of Gainesville makes a drastic and needed change. Diversity has to be achieved within the city government and all our departments. This efficiency has to be addressed and done effectively and immediately. I want to have community meetings every four months in as many parts of my district as I can. And that has to be arranged by you. All you have to do is call my office and you have concerns. Just let me know and I'll come and see you. Let me know if you have a, a prescribed or scheduled meeting so we all can sit down and talk and discuss the problems and find solutions. Again, I'd like to thank you one and all for everything that you did or wanted to do. And as you see, I was not supposed to be here. That's what they told me. They say, oh, Charles, he's, he's not, he's not going to win. And I don't think it's anybody in Gainesville who don't know me unless they live up under a rock. But I love to be underestimated. It's my greatest secret weapon. There's two things that I'm working on, and that is I've been practicing every day to walk on water. <laughs> and I've been throwing water on the floor every day, walking on it. I say, well, that's a good start. And that Lincoln High School band that I mentioned earlier, because of my dedication and commitment, ladies and gentlemen, I became the head drum major of that band. And I, I want to say this to you and to everybody, my son, who I'm so proud of, I, I love him to death, my other children, Michael's over here, that they were the love of my life. They kept me straight. They allowed me to give them what my parents wanted to give me, but they couldn't. Nobody will stop me from giving my district what they want and what they need, because I love my district and the people who live in it, both black and white, and I want you to understand this as well. I may be an African-American sitting in District 1 seat, but if you live in District 1, if you're not black, so what? If you're white, you have just as much access to me as everybody else. And I want to thank everybody who understands my mission. And I thank the city of Gainesville, and I thank Alachua County for being what it is. And all I can say to you today is, let's go to work. Wonderful, wonderful. And now we will uh, entertain a motion for the election of the mayor, pra prayer, mayor, commissioner pro tem. I recognize Commissioner Chase. Do we have a second? Motion and a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Commissioner Carter. And with all the items on the business for this meeting concluded, we have six minutes our meeting. Actually, we do, but uh, we have uh, refreshments, and uh, this, is, this is a time of joy. Uh, you came here to support uh, the people you worked so hard for, or people you've admired, so we will start the city commission late. Um, and we will have a time of fellowship right now, and so we will uh, call for 1.30 is when we hope, hope to be at City Hall. So uh, enjoy. This meeting is adjourned.